Hey everybody, Andrew the Realtor here. Welcome to the middle of June. Um, uh, welcome to my little, quick little monthly market update. Uh, answer, I'm going to answer, well, at least one major question that I'm getting a lot of recently uh, for all the reasons that I'll explain in just a little bit. Um, getting this out a little bit later than I wanted to, but as some of you know who have asked me about you know the information that I give, and I'm glad that it's a benefit to a lot of you folks. Uh, some of you folks are in U.S. Some of you folks are in a couple of other provinces even. And uh, interestingly, uh, what happens in the GTA often happens with the rest of Canada or certainly in the rest of Ontario after a certain while. So anyway, um, thank you very much for watching. I'm going to get right to it. And uh, this is the market update for the month of, uh, well, the month of June. Stats from the month of May. Let's get to this thing. So I am going to uh, move myself, minimize myself here. And let's present. Here we go. So the month of May, and uh, I'll mention one reason that I always try to get this out a little bit later in the month after I actually get the stats is I do have a couple of sources that I try to at least listen to in terms of what they're saying about the market, specifically people, uh, some local business people and such that actually have been consistently accurate about the subject. And uh, that's why I want to make sure that you guys get accurate information. This stuff is really important. It's not so much even self-serving. I hope you see that way. And I hope it certainly is a benefit. So May, one thing for sure you guys are going to notice is these market updates are going to start slowing down in terms of excitement. Why? Because the market actually is somewhat a little bit becoming a little more normal. So let's look at May. So May obviously had a lot more sales than May of 2020, because at that time we were still getting out of uh, the COVID situation, at least initially, and we're still kind of getting a handle on things. Uh, clearly, it's a, not a very busy month in terms of May 2020. This May, very busy, but not record busy, as was March. March of this year was an absolute record for any month ever. Um, April, also very busy. April, May, fairly normal. In fact, we've had a lot of Mays that are similar to it. Um, average price, this is where it is important to look at. Um, so up 28.4%. Obviously, last year in May, still recovering from the initial onset of covid so, uh, there, you know, you have to keep that in mind when you're looking at it still at 28.4%, clearly, clearly a huge increase. And as you guys have seen these, as the updates, you know, supply and demand very much plays into it. It's honestly as simple as that. Um, the supply has not been there. The demand is incredibly strong. Whatever the supply is, it gets eaten up. Um, let's look at the new, new listings. Um, you'll see it over here up a hundred, a hundred three percent. So 18,000 listings, that's a lot of listings. If that was active listings, we'd be very close to a balanced market and things would be a lot more normal. But clearly the demand is so high that that gets eaten up and active listings actually are just over 12,000 or were just over 12,000 last month. The point being still very much a seller's market. Um, average days on market obviously is gonna be very, very low because homes are selling quickly. We're selling quickly in May. Uh, slight difference uh, this month of June, I'll explain why that is. Some of you can probably guess. Now, everybody's, everybody's up across the board, including the condos, which is a good thing considering the condo market was uh, kind of stagnant for the longest time up until about March-ish. Uh, detached are a particularly high. Again, is it sustainable? Clearly not. It's going to slow down at some point in time. We're already seeing a little bit of it, but May was still very much high. Now, um, we'll discuss a little bit as to why that is, but these are the numbers. Clearly, the big thing is price. That's what I'm hearing about right now. So, next some reasons why and forgive me the blurriness i got this from benjamin tal if you know who he is he's the head economist for cbc amazing guy amazing speaker really knowledgeable dude if i may um so let's talk about the prices because i know one of the things i'm constantly getting is we're going to talk about the stress test that has just changed and we're going to talk about different reasons why people think okay inevitably market is going to start crashing down market crash or a correction or something Let's, I'm going to give you guys some perspective on what's going on. So this is share of low paying jobs and job losses during the recession. Remember 1990, 91, 2008, 2009, recession times and such. Look how much bigger the numbers are right now. Share of low paying jobs. Why I mentioned this specifically. One of the things that were, people were talking about, even last year, they were saying, oh no, a lot of these people can't work. Clearly people are going to lose their homes. People are going to be buying homes. No one's going to buy anything. I think it was it was a CMHC, I believe, and one, one of the other major groups thought it was going to be a really slow year last year. It was clearly the opposite of it. Why were they so wrong? Well, one of the things they didn't look at is the job losses they have incurred. And I'm not saying any job loss is a good thing. Please don't get me the wrong. Wrong. I don't want to minimize the effect that people who don't have jobs, uh, you know, on their lives, you know, not having a job is a big effect on your life. Clearly, and I know people that have been in that position. Please don't think I'm minimizing that in any by any stretch. 
However, if you look at what the numbers were in terms of people who uh, are low paying jobs, that's the highest number, over 80%. The point being a lot of the jobs, over 80% of those jobs um, that, that were lost were lower paying jobs, meaning that these are not people who were necessarily buying a property, especially in the GTA or held a property, especially in the GTA. The point being, those those job losses did not affect the housing market hardly at all. That's the number. That's one reason why even now um, it is still feasible or it's it's it's, it's um, prudent to say that it may the job losses that may be upcoming, God forbid, um, may still be not may still not have nearly as much of an effect on the market. That's actually important to know. That's one thing that people are saying. Oh, they're going to lose their jobs or has lost their jobs. They're going to be able to pay things. The CRB is going to stop. Will have some effect. Probably a little bit. A lot? Well, these are the actual numbers. Next. Uh, COVID. Uh, and to this day, people are asking me, are you still showing properties? You know, is, how are you doing that with COVID? And we've been doing this for over a year now because we're in June. Um, this is a typical listing safely. We're still actively encouraging everyone. Uh, if anyone's had any sickness or anything, um, they don't come to the property. You know, for any of you who are thinking of listing property, I have listings on the market right now. This is a very real, real thing. What's interesting is, and kind of nice is, people took to this really quickly. They washed their hands. We have hand sanitizer in places. We have people wearing masks, all that stuff to make the, the sellers and the buyers and everyone involved feel comfortable. Whatever area of the spectrum you're in, in terms of very afraid to not caring as much, we want to make sure everyone's covered, that everyone's comfortable. Um, good hygiene, all the usual stuff, a lot of virtual experiences, a lot of virtual tours. Um, and of course, there's a COVID-19 waiver. If any of you have booked a showing on any of my listings uh, or certainly have been with me, uh, before I show you a property, there is a uh, COVID-19 waiver that I signed. So if I know a, a buyer has had some symptoms or anything, you know, can't do it. Luckily for me, that has not been the case. So um, that aside, I just want to mention this specifically, very much showing. The interesting thing is, while things were incredibly busy, I still have people saying, are you still showing property? How do you show property? It's busier than it was before even the COVID. Now, let me minimize myself even more so. So you guys, those, those of you who have seen the, the previous uh, updates, you guys know about this. So this is what the sellers have been dealing with. And this is what the market has been doing specifically. So we got January through March, uh, crazy. March was the specific crazy month. I had January, February here. I added March to this as well because it was crazy. The market was absolutely nuts. Um, at 10,000 to 11,000 active listings, super sellers market. Um, and that's where we were even before May. So April-ish, March certainly, uh, around April-ish. Um, the point being, it was it was not crazy. It had slowed down slightly. So instead of 20 offers, it was eight to 10 offers on a property as if that makes things for buyers that much easier. Now, um, we're getting slowly into the to the 14 to 15,000 active listings, um, give or take. These market, you know, the numbers fluctuate, but we're getting right now into what is a seller's market. Um, clearly not a buyer's market, not a balanced market, but at least a seller's market. So buyers or people who, if, if any, are thinking of actually buying, um, it's becoming a lot easier. Well, a lot easier compared to crazy. Still multiple offer situations, still bidding wars. That is still happening. And you know this by the numbers you see on the prices. That's still continuing. Um, but it is slowing down. And that's a good sign. First, frankly, I love a more normal market anyway. Um, for sellers, still selling well. Those numbers that were uh, the very, very peak of certain areas, I don't know if they'll last necessarily. But honestly, for the most part, whatever things have been selling for, they're selling for now or more with a little bit of appreciation. So the point being, if you're thinking of selling and maybe you're gonna do it sometime soon or maybe in a few months later this year, not a big deal, moving right along. Currently, just to add, just to kind of reiterate, currently we're, I think we're right around 14,000 or so, uh, 13, 14, 14 and a half, right in that area we've been for a while. Um, and that's gonna continue. Usually by June, we're closer to 20,000 than a normal year, clearly not the case now. Next, I will show this price. In all honesty, guys, this is the way it's been going. Um, with a few small ticks down here and there, the market has been going consistently upward. And uh, there are reasons for that, especially now uh, that I'm going to get into in just a second. But uh, this has been the trajectory. It is still the same trajectory. Um, I say that because I do still find folks, they're waiting, they're waiting for the market to go down. They're waiting for things to change, some drastic measure. And the truth is, even if it went down 5%, 10%, which it won't, um, those folks probably would still wait for something higher. 
And unfortunately, they're going to miss out on the possibility of home ownership, or at least maybe upsizing to somewhere where they can actually enjoy uh, their home a lot more for the next few years. So this is still happening, guys. I always include this in the thing here. I want to be as upfront and candid with you guys as possible. So attention buyers. Now, I had this up for the past couple of, couple of months because I've known that this is going to be happening. This happened June 1st. The stress that so hot. Ah, some folks are saying, and I know a lot of people in the past two weeks I've been speaking to actual people, homeowners and such that I don't know, random people. I've been speaking to people. A lot of this has come up. Well, we're waiting to see what happens with the stress test. Well, well, we're waiting for the prices to drop a little bit. We're waiting for the market to slow down a lot. It happened June 1st. And uh, as a matter of fact, it, it was no small deal. Look at those numbers here. And again, thank you to uh, Benjamin Tell from CIBC. Uh, forgive me for the blurriness. However, you guys can see 2008, 2009 recession. Uh, versus current variable rates. The, as it says here, the current stress test that we have implemented as of June 1st uh, requirements are bring qualifying rates to higher levels, not even the same higher levels than they were back in 2009. So uh, eight and nine, he made a mistake there. Um, so that's where we're at. That's a new stress test. Has it made things more difficult for buyers? Absolutely. You know who it always hurts? The very people there, the supposedly people who are in charge are trying not to hurt first time home buyers, the lower, the lower income of the buyer pool so to speak it ruins your affordability anywhere between four and a half to five percent meaning that if you're going to buy something at 500 previously which isn't the easiest thing in the gta um now you're looking at what um, 25 less so 475 480 that 20 000, 25 000 makes a big difference at that price range you can double it for something in a million so that's a stress test is that going to make much of a difference why was it put in i'll explain here this is and this is very important um what effect will the stress test have? I hate this on the time. That's why I'm going a little bit over my usual time here. Answer is honestly minimal to none. And, and, and in, in some areas, none. Uh, main, main idea being that it is, it is just an idea. And I'll, I'll talk about the smoke and mirrors effect. Uh, it is, it's a t when markets are doing a specific thing and it doesn't look good because the affordability of home of housing is down and it's difficult for a lot of people to get into the housing market. That's just the reality of a place like the GTA. Um, politicians and people in charge will want to make it look like they're doing something. They want to make it look like they're trying to do something. Um, and so you have these ideas like vacant home tax idea. You have the foreign buyer tax idea, you know, implemented something. Some of these and there's more. Some implemented, some non implemented. But they bring up and bring these things up consistently because they want to slow down the housing market. But the reality is what do those things actually have on the overall market? The effect is minimal to none, as will the stress test be. It'll, it'll ruin things for some buyers, but the market's going to continue on as it is naturally. Why? Because a lot of it is just smoke and mirrors. They want affordable housing, and which is a good thing, and it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an honorable thing. Um, but the reality is they cannot possibly stop the market. They don't want to stop the housing market. The proof of this is the interest rates. They're still very, very low. And they're going to continue to be low, low for quite a while. So the reality is the housing market, and certainly I'm a part of it, so I know quite a bit about it. The housing market is keeping a, a, a large portion of the economy going. That's the way it is. And so the powers that be would not want that market to slow down because they need the money, especially during the COVID situation. Look how much money the government has been spending. They need as much money coming in as possible. And the housing market is a huge portion of that, certainly in the GTA, certainly in the province of Ontario. Um, so what they want, affordable housing versus... Uh, what, what they say they want affordable housing and such, what they actually want is to maintain the market going and going because it, it creates a lot of money uh, and income for the government, for people, for infrastructure, all these kinds of things. We need money right now during COVID. So frankly, uh, I'll be quite candid with you guys, until the market, and I've heard this from some best sources I've heard in the recent, that until the, how, and the interest rates are closer about 3%, high twos, low threes, around there, don't expect the market to slow down too much unless it naturally does so, and it certainly don't expect the prices to come down much. Um, it would take quite a bit for that to happen. The demand is there, and we have not even touched immigration yet. So that's where we're at. That's not a negative thing. If you own property, if you're moving up, I've, I've had great success with people who have made a lot of equity, and now they're buying a bigger property. It's amazing to see because I can see the, the, the evolution in, the, in, the, in their life, so to speak. Um, but it's, uh, it, it is a difficult thing for first-time home buyers. It's a difficult thing for some to not be able to afford a home. That's the way the reality is. The housing market in the GTA, very strong. It's going to continue to be very strong. One reason, a lot of people depend on it, and not just people buying and selling. People who are in Canada, people who are in Ontario, people who are in the GTA, and the governments, they need the money from the housing market. So that's me. Way over time, so I apologize this is long. I hope it didn't sound like a ramble. But I want you guys to have fantastic information, important, and then current information 
about the housing market. Anything else, any comments, whatever, as I've been getting, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate the compliments. Thank you so much for the encouragement. Um, reach out to me. Any questions and such, concerns, give me a shout, text me, call me, email me, whatever you like. You guys know I do a lot of my business from referrals. So if you think someone can benefit from this kind of information, even if this one's a little long, send it over to them. And uh, I'll be more than happy to, uh, you know, just provide this. Obviously, it's free. I do my own information, try to make it uh, the best uh, possible thing that I could do for you guys to inform you of what's important in the market now. So you guys have a great rest of June and in July. I'll see you then.